Welcome to the channel. I explain all of my moves, as some of you know, or you will quickly find out, in an effort to help everybody get better. Today, I am showing off a Werewolf by Night deck. It's a very much an off-meta deck. I, I built it thinking it might be good, but uh, wasn't really convinced, but that's why you, you play it out. Uh, and it, it convinced me. On one of my rare Twitch streams, I experimented with three different versions. This is the one that emerged as the best of the bunch. And so I will throw it to past me to take it away from here. It is a Ravona style. Now what Ravona allows me to do is discount Werewolf to two. So on turn three, I could play Werewolf and then a one cost on reveal card. And now Werewolf just gets a move in the same turn he was played at. So that intrigues me. Uh, she discounts the Green Goblin. I I'm pretty sure the Green Goblin can move Werewolf. Green Goblin and Titania are a good combination. Uh, the thing with evaluating decks, you don't want to think negatively about a deck if you know you are getting bad draw luck or if you know you are getting bad location luck. You want to evaluate the deck when you actually can do stuff like how is the deck performing and then also how consistently does it perform that way uh so i don't have beast in hand so i will hold on to the ice man for now that's domain so they can get into there but i can as well with werewolf so i think i just hold one more turn we get werewolf down left i always say be patient this is almost definitely a cerebro 2 deck Boy, these locations. Get help! Help him! I think I still play down Werewolf. Like and subscribe. I kind of don't want to storm Weird World. And I have White Widow now. They're White Widow, not mine. Hmm. Play White Widow mid. Iceman here. They don't have Sean because it's a C2 deck. So I can safely play down Cole. <laughs> oh, hilarious. White Widows for everyone. Simple as that. Okay, so the mid's still a draw. Now I could play Storm there last turn. That's always an option. They got my Red Hulk. Okay. I got their Cerebro. That is funny. Uh, I Boy, I really don't want priority here. We know they don't have Sean. I have my Sean in hand. I got... Is this Thermostique or the Hub? That's funny. Hmm... I do not know what I want to do. I play this here. They're not filling because they have Nightcrawler. What was that Red Hulk at? 17? If I do... Mm, if I play Brood mid? That doesn't fit... Wait, it does fill. Rude mid actually fills with werewolf. So I think I stack... This is hilarious. I think if I stack right, the brood plays, gets destroyed, the werewolf goes mid, the widow's kiss goes to zero. I'm at 17, 19 here. I think... I, no, I don't like snapping last turn uh, because that might scare them away. And I think I have a good play here. Yeah, yeah, this is a good play. And I didn't, so I don't, I don't want to scare them off. Now let's see if Werewolf works exactly like I expect them to. The Brood destroys and then the Werewolf flips. Come on. Don't let me down, Wolf. Oh, that was slick right there. 
Uh, yeah, so, so last turn snaps. I don't like to snap on the last turn unless I really look like I am losing bad. And they know the cards in their deck. They know I have Storm. So even though that actually wouldn't have worked to their benefit, because if I snap on the last turn, maybe they go, oh, this guy drew Storm. He's going to play into Death's Domain and then play a big card there. And I'm going to lose because I'm throwing right. So let me adjust. Uh, but that also wouldn't have helped them because that wasn't what I was doing. But... Uh, yeah, this was kind of a, a slick win with with this deck for a the first time I'm taking it into the game. Yeah, the first time. So not bad, even though it wasn't fully our deck with Weird World. Uh, we're still getting uh, horrible locations, but I uh, was able to pull that one out. Okay. Playing Cole into Necrotia is kind of nice. I don't have to worry about Sean. Clearly an Annihilus deck. Amelia, okay. Opponent snapped. It's not even worth it. So the reason I just leave it is my hand isn't great. I would have played Ravona this turn, Werewolf next turn. I have no one cost in hand, so I couldn't even play down a one cost and then on turn four I play Call. I, so I don't even know what my turn four looks like with this hand. I know what my end game looks like. There's Sean, there's Red Hulk, there's Call. I clearly see they have Hood into Necrotia. They in all likelihood have Annihilus in hand, so it's just not even worth they snapped, they told us they are in a strong position, so let's get out of here. Okay, next up is green one, not to be confused with the Hulk. This is a better opening hand. The, the issue I run into with building decks as well is I like to throw in a bunch of different pieces that work individually together, but just on a whole, it, it ends up not coming together. So I actually contribute to bad draw luck this might actually be fantastic. The Titania and Green Goblin combo is very good, which is why it's in this deck. So if I assume they play middle this turn, I can actually block them. Now, I think I will give them extra energy, which kind of sucks each turn. So maybe I wait? Hmm, do I wait or do I do it this turn? I think I will. This is a tough decision. Because uh, in all likelihood they are playing middle and we can just jam them up. Take the jam. Don't, don't play to hope. I should just take the jam. Yes, I'm going to give them extra energy every turn but we can win this lane because all i need to do is play a one cost middle and i get it and i win that lane so why pass that up are you seriously not going to have me draw by one cost cards uh, i guess we're just playing werewolf down here and then maybe if i play a one cost card oh how many did they duplicate they had five. I was too late. No, they had six, so they duplicated three of their cards. I still have no clue of what deck this is, though. Okay, this is actually good. Uh, do I snap into this? Can they win? We know they can't win mid. And they're going to have priority. So I can Sean... I snap into this. This is a strong position. I have some flexibility with Black Swan. I have a free rocket only, but okay. So I can kind of, that allows me to position my werewolf if I need to. But I really need another one cost card, ideally, because I don't know what I'm going to play middle to flip that back. But I do know we're in a strong position. Even though I 
am unclear as to the deck that I am playing. So right now, last turn is, of course, Rocket. He's free. Call, and it's got to be Call or Sean. So I guess that means Rocket goes middle, and then Sean goes left. <laughs> is this what you wanted? So they, they made that easy for me. We have priority. So there's no way they drop that Devil Dino all the way down. Now I'd love another one cost card to get. Uh, okay, okay. So. What do I play? I don't play Rocket mid, actually. I play... White Widow mid. That's five. I get the five back. So I go to ten. And what's more points? I think it's Rocket and Sean left. Yes, I missed the extra bounce on Werewolf. Or maybe it's a wash. I'm not going to run all of that math because Rocket is plus four. So I think I just load up. Load up left. And we'll see what they do. So that gets the Werewolf one bounce. I get the Titania back. We're abandoning right. I could... Could I have fought for right? I could have. I could have played White Widow mid and then Rocket and Cull right. But also, that would only be 11 to 15 worth of power. So let's say it's 15. They would need to play 12 points of power. Okay, they're seeing it through. Yeah, this was a very easy win. Very easy win. So, Titania flips back. We have that win. And then the Sean. You always have to put the Sean last. And we even went on power 16 to 15, even without getting rid of... So, it's funny enough, I could have played Cole left and we still would have won. But of course, you don't do that. You always play the Sean where you can see the target. We got a good win with Werewolf actually coming into play. You see the junk cards as well. That's part of a, a sub package we have in this deck with the Goblin and the Titania. The play order is very important. You play Titania first and Green Goblin second. And you always want to do it when you are certain they have, they're going to only have two cards in a lane. But even if you're wrong and they have three, what happens is the even though you play Titania first, the Goblin will fly over and fill their lane and the Titania will have nowhere to flip to. So even if they play three, uh, you're still fine. Now, if they play four, of course you're in trouble. And if they play only one card, so if they only played the Forge and they played the Wave elsewhere, then it, uh, we might have been in trouble because the Titania would have just been flipping back and forth, potentially. It would have been a uh, mental game. But uh, I was almost 99.9% uh, .9 sure that they play in the Castle Blackstone because you want that energy bonus. Giving up that energy bonus was well worth it to know, to guarantee a win mid. And that's what I did. I guarantee to win mid. And then I just hope that uh, I have Sean in hand. I have Cole. So even though Sean's not a big card in the technical sense, he is because he was worth... Uh, how big is this Dino? 13. So Sean was worth 16 power. So that's a big card. Uh, so that's why uh, I was comfortable giving up that bonus energy, just hoping they play a big card that I could Sean. That is a fantastic question. Will they nerf Sean? You deserve what's coming. Will they ever nerf Sean? So, ever is a long time. So, but I don't think it's going to be anytime soon, quite frankly. If, if they nerf Sean, the only thing I can think of is they move Sean to a five cost card. Then there would be less to air him with on the last turn 
but nerfing Sean means a lot of these big, big power decks just will run crazy. Uh, let's see. That is funny. They played, they played armor into Bifrost. They're up to something because you play armor into Bifrost. Armor is just going to move middle and then fly everywhere the last turn. I'm playing Werewolf right. I don't know what they're up to. I might be able to clog them this turn on the left. But with Strange Academy, that is just annoying because I can't really clog them. But uh, we're going to do it anyway. See how it works out. I wonder... I wonder if they're going to play left or not. Because again, these are a funky set of locations. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we clogged them there. I did move my werewolf there to get... Oh, we didn't get dinged. I don't know why they played high evo. I would not have done that. Of course, I don't know what's in their hand, but you miss on the Cyclops trigger. It is turn five. We can really clog them up. We can really clog them up. I think I snap into this. I don't know how good of a snap this is, but I have White Widow and Black Swan. I probably punt... Do I do I play do I play Black Swan mid? Because Cyclops would only dinger by one, and then the werewolf would move again. I think that's what I do. Boy, this undo turn is a lifesaver for me. Okay, they're yeah they're really going to be clogged up. And that abomination was five cost because Cyclops never triggered. And then this werewolf should get another bonus. Oh, that was the problem with playing mid. But I mean, all the cards are moving anyway. Okay, funny. So the way Titania is, they kind of have to play right if they want to win. And if they don't play right, they... Uh, who has priority? I have priority. So Sean is worthless. So I think I play for, I think I play for left. So I can only move werewolf once. I cannot play right again, because if they don't play, then I just give them that win. So right is off limits. Of course, unless I play beast, but that's equally as foolish. So play Beast first, Werewolf pops mid, Iceman goes mid, uh, and Werewolf doesn't move. So Werewolf's at 9. And I play Rocket here. Oh, interesting. I have enough energy. So I can actually play out all my cards. So I can actually pop him back and forth. So here, 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 and here. Yeah, so let's pop our werewolf back and forth. I don't... How can they win this? They haven't floated any energy either. They might be new to playing Evo. Because you almost always want to float energy. So they can't play She-Hulk, or, or it's just 10. Their Hulk is just 12 points of power. So yeah, you flood the board with a bunch of small cards. Let's see if that's enough. Yeah, just keep bouncing this werewolf back and forth. Yeah, that is... I agree, it is kind of odd. Maybe this is a uh, Sean I should be expecting? Yikes. Definitely not Sean. Yeah, see, this was... I don't know, that was just weird. Uh, the reason I say new is... What rank are they? Does it say? Okay, it doesn't say. So... They could just be messing around. They could be trying to do dailies. 
when you are below 5,000, only you can see your own rank. So I can't see their rank. That means they're below 5,000. But I mean, they're in infinite and around around my general rank, I would think. Uh, but the, the plays were just odd. That's, that's why I question it. The plays were very odd. So they may have been... It may not have been new to Hyvebo, but maybe experimenting with a specific Hyvebo deck. I don't see a bunch of people running Abomination, even though I did feature them in my deck. Uh, so that that's why I kind of lean that way. I, I don't really see many people running the Affliction style. Scorpion clearly is in here. But playing Hyvebo is really weird. Because you can get Cyclops triggers, you can discount your Abomination. So... So yeah, it was just an odd play pattern, honestly. But another... Is this three games in a row? I think it might be three games in a row. So we might actually have a uh, winner at this... Uh, for this uh, wolf deck that I'm trying to make. Bailing on mid. Okay, this can't be enough. Can it? Haha, <laughs> I got him. Perfect. 